In the latest installments of the Royal Soap Opera, Omid Scobie has donned his sparkly investigative hat once again, revealing the riveting tale of Kate Middleton's allegedly frosty disposition and her newfound title as the monarchy's part-time working royal. Move aside tragedies of yore, Scobie's endgame is the new standard for dramatic narrative arcs, where royal corridors are now presumably fraught with the chilling echoes of Kate's purported shivers at the mere mention of Meghan's name. One can almost picture the Buckingham Palace thermostat set to icy glare. Scobie's expose seems to suggest that behind the palace walls, the Duchess of Cambridge is navigating a labyrinth of intrigue, spearing pleasantries as if they were rationed jewels from the royal vault. The revelation that Kate has apparently not spoken to Meghan since 2019 feels like a plot twist straight out of a daytime soap, leaving the audience on the edge of their thrones, eagerly awaiting the next scandalous reveal. It's almost as if Scobie has given us a backstage pass to the royal drama, where emotions run as high as the stakes for the Queen's favorite corgi at a Westminster dog show. In the grand tradition of royal revelations, Endgame seems set to join the pantheon of scandalous literary works that rival the best reality TV dramas. As the saga unfolds, one can't help but wonder, will Kate's alleged shivers lead to a royal climate change, or is this just another tempest in a teapot? Either way, Scobie's literary prowess has turned the monarchy into a gripping reality show leaving readers eagerly anticipating the next chapter in this grand spectacle of tiaras, tantrums, and tea. Behold the royal experts, those gallant defenders of regal virtue, who have emerged from the hallowed halls of Buckingham Palace, armed not with swords, but with quivers of disapproval, aiming their arrows of disdain directly at Omit Scobie's audacious pen. Robert Jobson, a fellow biographer and self-appointed guardian of royal sanctity, steps onto the field with all the dramatic flair of a Broadway actor, denouncing Scobie's literary escapades as nothing short of disgraceful. Jobson, in his grandiloquent wisdom, commends Scobie's gumption and marketing prowess, as if writing a scathing expose were merely a clever PR stunt. Yet, the true object of his ire is the perceived injustice of Scobie's attack on the fair name of the Duchess of Cambridge. According to Jobson's royal calculus, Kate is the embodiment of all things virtuous and regal, a paragon of duty and family values, who undoubtedly spends her evening sipping tea with the grace and poise of a caffeinated swan. The mere suggestion that Scobie might be attempting to cozy up to Harry and Meghan for nefarious purposes is dismissed with the disdain reserved for peasants who dare to question the divine right of the monarchy. As the quills clash and the ink-stained battlefield becomes a stage for thespian rebukes, one can't help but chuckle at the spectacle of grown adults engaging in a verbal joust over the perceived transgressions of a royal biographer. The question lingers in the air like the scent of Axe body spray at a frat party. Is this a battle for the ages, or merely a tempest in a teapot? Then we have the melodious tones of Richard Fitzwilliam, that intrepid maestro of royal analysis, adding his symphony of disapproval to the grand opera of Omid Scobie's revelations. You can almost imagine Fitzwilliam, adorned in a regal robe of wisdom, descending from the ivory tower of royal expertise to cast his judgment on Scobie's audacious pursuit of sensation. The tea-sipping elite, surely in the midst of a collective fainting spell, gasp at the suggestion that a royal biographer would dare to sensationalize anything. It's almost as if Fitzwilliam has uncovered the scandalous secret that royal reporting might involve a sprinkle of drama and a dash of flair. But lo and behold, Fitzwilliam, the oracle of Buckingham Palace, enlightens us with Scobie's purported prophecy. The monarchy, that age-old institution of crowns and curtsies, faces a crisis of extinction or irrelevance. Forget climate change or global pandemics, the real threat is Scobie, armed with a pen and a penchant for predicting royal doom. It seems the monarchy should prepare itself for an apocalypse of regal proportions, with Scobie leading the charge into the abyss of irrelevance. Move over, Nostradamus. We have Omid Scobie, the seer of Sussex scandals and herald of royal calamity. But worry not, for Scobie's literary scalpel spares no one, especially not to the Duchess of Cambridge and her purportedly scandalous engagement calendar. According to Scobie's discerning eye, Kate is, gasp, 
technically a part-time working royal. Forget the intricate geopolitical chess games, the real crisis lies in the number of engagements penciled into Kate's royal planner. One can almost picture Buckingham Palace in chaos, with aides scrambling to fill Kate's schedule to avert the impending catastrophe of her part-time status. Who knew that the fate of the monarchy rested on the shoulders of a duchess and her royal engagements? The so-called scandalous revelations just keep coming, and the monarchy may never be the same again. In a deft move, Scobie compares Kate's workload to a roller coaster, dipping during maternity leaves and ascending in the years that follow. The numerical journey of Kate's royal duties is recounted with the precision of a mathematician analyzing an algorithm, all in the name of proving her commitment to the crown. However, Scobie's piece de resistance is the revelation that Kate earned the moniker, Katie Keene, a title seemingly crafted in the hallowed halls of tabloid heaven. This, according to Scobie, is not a compliment but a sly jab at Kate's supposedly overeager approach to royal duties. The nickname, he claims, is a euphemism for palace press releases desperately trying to mitigate Kate's less-than-royal work ethic. Scobie's criticism reaches its zenith in a scathing chapter solely focused on the future queen. Here, he alleges that Kate is comfortable in her role and willing to bring the requisite smile and elegance to her duties as princess. Oh, the horror! One can only imagine Kate recoiling in shock as her commitments to duty and regal elegance are dissected in the public eye. To add insults to injury, Scobie questions Kate's leadership qualities and outgoing nature, comparing her unfavorably to the ever-shining Meghan, who, in his eyes, was another shimmering ornament in the royal family tree. The implication is clear. Kate is the steady, dependable oak, while Meghan is the dazzling sequin adorning the royal gown. Yuck. Scobie's magnum opus takes a detour into the realm of psychology, speculating on Kate's alleged reluctance to increase her workload for the next decade or so. His analysis suggests that Kate's focus on early childhood and her smaller work schedule are intentional choices, rather than a mere reflection of her personal priorities and commitments to specific causes. The biographer then turns his attention to Kate's allegedly lackluster public speaking skills, asserting that she often stumbles on her words. In a dramatic twist, Scobie recounts a nerve-wracking episode in which Kate was coerced into a low-pressure, small-stakes appearance on Blue Peter, leaving her a bag of nerves and well out of her comfort zone. The horror. Surely the fate of the monarchy hangs in the balance when a royal dares to feel nervous about a public appearance. In a move that can only be described as a literary mic drop, Scobie suggests that Kate's lower workload is a result of her role in producing heirs, sparing her the rigorous demands of more public-facing duties. According to the biographer, palace gatekeepers are vigilant in ensuring that Kate is not pushed too hard, as if preparing her for the royal marathon to queendom, a race that apparently requires careful pacing. The grand finale of Scobie's literary symphony is his claim that Megxit birthed Kate 2.0, a more approachable version of the future queen who graced the Happy Baby, Happy Mum podcast. One can only marvel at the astuteness of Scobie's observations as he submits that Palisades were afraid to push Kate out of her comfort zone, creating a curated image of the Duchess as a regal mother with a picture-perfect life. In conclusion, Omid Scobie's Endgame is a tour de force of royal gossip, a dazzling display of literary acrobatics that leaves no royal reputation unscathed. As the dust settles on the battlefield of regal intrigue, one thing is clear. The monarchy, much like the characters in Scobie's tale, will continue to reign over our collective fascination, even if it means enduring the slings and arrows of a scandal-hungry scribe of a scab that is Omid Scobie. That is all for this episode, but brace yourself for much more as we continue to gather the shells of the explosive aftermath, or in our case, satirical ammo, that Endgame shall leave in its wake. Thank you all for watching, and please show your love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It'd be a big help. Have a wonderful day, and see you all here next time.